This is the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather and Connie Chung. Good evening. The United States has begun a military op occupation of Haiti. The purpose is to install democracy. A very risky last-minute deal was struck that stopped what would have been a full-fledged U.S. military invasion and possibly prevented U.S. casualties. Instead of forcibly removing Haitian military rulers, the Clinton administration has now agreed to work with them, hoping for a peaceful transfer of power back to the exiled elected president. Many questions remain unanswered about all of this. Still, the first day of the military mission went off without a hitch. Somalia's seasoned troops came in mid-morning, prepared to take positions in Haiti by force. But they need not have worried. The U.S. forces were cheered and welcomed as long-lost friends. good view from the helicopter and we were talking to the scout and attack helicopters and lift helicopters we haven't seen any resistance and we haven't expected any i think it's better it's better for the country it's better overall i think it's a good thing I, I don't think it's necessary to go violence all the time the first americans to reach haiti's military headquarters in port-au-prince just walked in army general hugh shelton leader of the combined forces reported a warm welcome from haiti's outgoing military leader general raul cedros very warm and very cordial one of cooperation what happens next sir we, uh, our staffs will get together to work out the uh, the final details one of general shelton's troops is travis boatwright here from fort drum new york we're ex excited to be here because this is what we train to do but ever there is that feeling of nervousness going around through the whole group Meanwhile, General Cedros didn't appear at all nervous, which is enough to make a lot of other people who support change in Haiti very nervous indeed. While Cedros has agreed to leave, another member of the ruling junta, Lieutenant Colonel Michel Francois, was not a party to the agreement and is reported to be in virtual hiding. And Haiti's foreign minister doubts any early return by the exiled elected president of the country. Mr. Foreign Minister, the agreement makes no mention specifically of the return of President Aristide. Do you, are you absolutely convinced that President Aristide will return and that he will return quickly? I'm not a prophet, but I do not think right now that the way this country is right now, I don't think it's possible. Underscoring, the U.S. presence on the ground here still involves real and considerable risks. Nonetheless, at the same time, there's genuine relief here. Fact is, American forces did come in today without having to fire a shot, but it came very close. The Carter Powell non negotiating team left Haiti for Washington with a cliffhanger of a deal. White House correspondent Rita Braver has more about that deal and how it was done. Savoring the news that an invasion had been forestalled, President Clinton met with members of Congress, many of whom had been harshly critical of his plan for military action. He praised his negotiating team. I know that you join me in thanking them for what they have done. Then it was on to a news conference. Flanked by former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Colin Powell, Senate Armed Services Committee Chairman Sam Nunn, and mission leader, former President Jimmy Carter, President Clinton acknowledged that at a point when it seemed the invasion would go forward, he told a reluctant Carter to pack up the negotiations. I said, this is uncomfortable for me. We've been friends a long time. I'm going to have to order you out of there in 30 more minutes. You've got to get out. But President Carter said that the imminent threat of an invasion finally moved Haiti's de facto president. He said, very quickly to, to summarize my answer, we will take peace instead of war. I will sign this agreement. Higher General Powell spoke of what had been avoided. American youngsters killing Haitian youngsters, and Haitian youngsters killing American youngsters. But President Clinton was pressed to explain why he approved honorable retirement for Haiti's military dictators, when just last week he'd released pictures he said showed them to be brutal thugs. 
you know, when, when you've got a country deeply divided, I mean, think of the things which have happened in South Africa when reconciliation was uh, possible. But Senate Minority Leader Bob Dole expressed surprise at the lenient treatment of dictator Raul Cedras. There it is, seemed a little strange after all the condemnation they heaped on him last week to say that he can stay till October 15th or maybe even stay in the country longer. And other senators raised more questions. Now that we're there, what do we do? What is the extent of our commitment? How much is it going to cost the American people? And how long are thousands of American troops going to remain in Haiti? And though President Clinton may have scored an interim victory by avoiding a confrontation and an invasion, he has not solved the long-term dilemma of the U.S. role in Haiti, Dan. Well, Rita, what do they say in answer to the question of whether General Cedrus is or is not going to stay in the country? You know, Dan, an official this evening told me that the whole deal was negotiated with the phrase that I wrote down, calculated ambiguity. That means they wanted to have some wiggle room. But we have seen them last week saying they will definitely go to saying they will probably go to today saying they may go. And that could end up haunting President Clinton, Dan. Rita Braver at the White House. The Haiti crisis, of course, has had President Clinton's full attention all day long, getting briefings and staying in contact with the various people who have things to do with this. As Rita reported, we know that the leading edge of the U.S. intervention was already in the air in the form of paratroopers and on its way here last night when the deal was struck. At the last moment, the order came down for U.S. troops to wipe the nighttime camouflage off their faces. CBS News national security correspondent David Martin has more about just how close it came. With the invasion set to begin at one minute past midnight, paratroopers from the 82nd Airborne boarded their planes Sunday evening. We'll fit it. We got room. At 6.47 p.m., the first of a long string of C-130s took off, each carrying about 60 paratroopers. Behind them, more paratroopers and C-141s. Their target, the airfield in Port-au-Prince, where the VIP jet carrying the Carter delegation was still waiting for the talks to end. We were on a timeline to execute what's been referred to as the kick in the door option. In fact, American combat troops were already ashore. At Cape Haitian in the north, where Marines had planned to land in hovercraft, Navy SEALs were surveying the beach for obstacles. The Pentagon hoped to surprise the Haitians, but General Biambi had found out. General Biambi received a report from Fort Bragg, he told us, that the initial operation had already commenced. With helicopters revving up to carry more troops in from Guantanamo Bay and Great Inagua Island, as well as the carrier America, 5,000 American combat troops would descend on Haiti in the first two hours after midnight. The Haitian generals felt they'd been had. They were on the verge of saying, we will not negotiate anymore. This may be a trick just to keep us occupied, all of us military commanders in the same room while the invasion takes place. But they kept talking. And as the planes closed in on their targets, the two sides struck a deal. At 8.20, the Pentagon called off the mission and ordered the planes to return to base. The, the lead aircraft was probably about a third of the way down to uh, Haiti. All the adrenaline and fear drained away. We either do it or not do it. Let's make a decision. The paratroopers filed off the plane and got ready to do it again if the president gave the order. If this thing goes back on again, we're going to jump this same group of parachutes. The operation was called off with about three and a half hours to spare. But 2,000 paratroopers remain on alert tonight, ready to take off again for Haiti in the event violence breaks out. David Martin, CBS News, the Pentagon. And still ahead on the CBS Evening News, live from Haiti. Who is this man, President Aristide? And what will his return to power mean? And in Los Angeles, O.J. Simpson's lawyers go through the motions of seeking a dismissal of the murder charges. Back now in the Haitian capital of Port-au-Prince. For the masses of the Haitian people, the foundation of President Aristide's support today was a day of deliverance. Thousands rushed out to greet the occupiers with open arms. For U.S. troops, the emotions were more mixed. CBS News veteran war correspondent Bob Simon was there for the arrival of the U.S. landing force. 
He's been there before, and so had many of these troops. People in Port-au-Prince looked to the skies this morning and saw salvation. Magic black machines which brought a hurricane to the streets and ecstasy to their faces. They saw a power strong enough to vanquish the terror which has gripped their lives for so many years. There were fields of people. Every time a chopper landed, it inspired a stampede. The soldiers dove into defensive positions, which seemed less than relevant in the circumstances. They were ready for snipers and angry mobs. They seemed a touch unprepared for this. They were overwhelmed by enthusiasm. Good morning, how are you? By people clasping at fences just to get close to the only protection they've seen since Aristide was overthrown. By this afternoon, people even dare to chant the forbidden name. 24 hours ago, this would have been suicidal. The police, henchmen of the regime, showed up, but the people kept on chanting. They had protection now. There had been a change in the balance of power, a change of heart. Oh, my heart's so happy today. I'm yeah, happy. Are, I'm very glad happy to see the military United States come to the country here. Others were less happy. The rich were less happy. I don't like the fact that they are here in my country and there's nothing I can do about it. And I'm real, real sad to tell you the truth. And the soldiers arriving in a strange and foreign land? Well, not quite. Many of these men had been to Somalia. Fellow president wasting our time. Because once we're gone, they're going to do it all over again. Were you in Somalia? Oh, yes, I was. How does this feel? It's, it's the same. Same as Somalia? It's the same as Somalia. About the same people, the same buildings look the same. Something else was the same as well. The Americans were greeted as liberators today, just as they'd been in Somalia and in Beirut. Bob Simon, CBS News, Port-au-Prince. For Haitians now living in New York, Miami, and other communities in the United States, the news from Haiti over the past 24 hours is cause for mixed emotions. CBS News correspondent Anthony Mason is tracking that part of the story back on the home front. In Miami's Haitian community today, they were debating the deal. Most welcomed the American occupation. They're going to give us peace over there. They're going, they're going to make a peace in Haiti. But many were stunned to hear that General Cedras would not be leaving Haiti immediately. That's a deal they make for Cedras. It is not for the Haitian people, not for our seed, not for the country. It is a deal for Cedras. Who do we want? Who do we love? When news of the deal first leaked out last night, Aristide supporters were angry. Cedras must go. Jimmy Carter is a hypocrite, they chanted. In Haitian communities all over the country, a deal which many hope to celebrate is instead being greeted with some suspicion and doubt. Why he chose to leave in October? What, what he has to do? He knows he has to go. He could just park and leave. But Cedras does have his allies in the Haitian community here, businessmen with ties to Haiti's economic elite. General Cedras has become a symbol to us, a lot of Haitians. By him not being there would create a certain panic, okay, uh, among us in thinking that, of course, the, uh, uh, the, the, the leftists are going to take over. They cheered the deal in a Miami church last night, but today many Haitian Americans say it's still too early to celebrate. Anthony Mason, CBS News, New York. Haiti is a plenty thorny foreign policy issue, but there is still Bosnia to consider. The civil war there is still raging tonight, despite repeated threats of military intervention. In Sarajevo today, the UN threatened to call in NATO airstrikes to break up a new round of fighting. The UN command says Muslim government forces started the shooting. Serbian forces responded with artillery, violating the UN ban on heavy weapons around Sarajevo. In a moment, the rest of the day's news, including the latest from the courtroom on the O.J. Simpson case. So stay here with us.